Ti evolayu, ti evoli, ti evoluai, Agnam. Oh, sorry. I'm used to reading right to left. Let me fix that. Manga. You love it. I love it. We all love it. It's a great form of consuming content. And as the world has progressed digitally, it's easier than ever to find manga to read online. Or is it? If you want to legally read a volume of your favorite series, it'd likely be easier to literally go to your local bookstore and pick it up, rather than trying to find a site where it's published online, where a few publishers make their works readily available. The rise of digitization of media inevitably leads to piracy, or illicit consumption of content. And while it's easy as... To start watching an anime online, manga is a bit harder. Just earlier this year, the largest aggregate site of scanlations was attacked and went offline for three months. There weren't any other good, reliable sites to read on that weren't, uh, really, really sketchy. Coincidentally, I didn't read much new stuff during that time. Huh. But what are some of the justifications for anime piracy? Let's take a look at some common excuses I hear a lot. The anime isn't available in my country due to licensing restrictions. Okay, I mean, yeah, there's not much you can do about that, besides buy the physical DVD or whatever. If it isn't available on streaming services, then sure, that could feasibly be excused. Well, it's okay to watch and read illegally because I buy merch of the series, so I'm still supporting them. I don't know about that one, bucko. You think the lion's share of the profits that are generated from you buying that cheap Himiko Toga figure go straight to the pockets of the mangaka, the original creator? There's the animation studio, the licensing company, the figure sculptor, the figure production company, the shipping company, and the original creator. It might be nice to have, but it's uh, not really the best way to support your favorite creator. But manga's a bit different. There are a few critical reasons why manga piracy is a different beast. Not that it's completely good or legal or anything, but it is more nuanced. First, it's a lot easier to just buy a volume of manga that you read online compared to searching for the DVD for it. You're much more likely to read it. I mean, who the hell even uses DVD players anymore? For example, one of my favorites, Spy Family, I read online, since Viz makes the three most recent chapters available every week. Whenever a new volume comes out, I buy it. Reading online can lead to more volume sales, which actually directly support the creator a lot more. Plus, having the volume physically is awesome. You can read it whenever, and the smell of the pages just never gets old. The most important part of online manga is the fact that a lot of the time, it's scanlation groups that translate manga chapters as they come out. Scanlation teams are groups of fans that work together in translating manga. Native translators, typesetters, editors, and what have you, just like any localization company. The difference is, scanlation groups make it so even the most obscure of titles get translated. I personally don't have much of an issue with reading scanlated manga that hasn't been, and won't likely ever be, officially sold in English. This is the case for three of my favorite manga. I read all of these thanks to scanlation groups. And as a big fan, I supported these mangaka directly as well. I bought the Japanese volumes. I literally wouldn't have been able to read those manga or find a connection with them had it not been for these scanlation teams. The Kyoto International Manga Museum raises an important point too. Foreign fans reading scanlated manga often help get those manga official translations due to popularity outside Japan. As the museum mentions, Foreign fans of Japanese manga have emerged and foreign markets for Japanese manga have developed precisely due to these pirated versions. Manga is a complex industry. Mangaka often work brutal hours on a week-to-week -week basis and rarely take breaks to meet their deadlines. And often, their editors have to force them to take their breaks. Earlier this year, the legendary author and artist and the father of the dark fantasy genre, Miura Kentaro, died. His brutal, haunting, beautiful work is credited as a huge influence on Hidetaka Miyazaki, director of the also genre-defining Dark Souls series. Miura died of a blood pressure-related disease. 
even the progenitor of all modern anime and manga, Tezuka Osamu, worked himself to the bone, often a point that many today lament, including Hayao Miyazaki. This is important to remember when considering manga piracy. This is an example of a weekly schedule created by Shibashi Hiroshi, an assistant for the art of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 7 Steel Ball Run, which is one of the most critically acclaimed manga out there. Mangaka work extremely hard. No one should ever forget that. So what are the solutions? I like to tell myself, though it may just be a coping mechanism, that buying officially licensed manga after having read it online is okay. Supporting localization companies and their efforts is important to keep the industry running. As for piracy, well, it's a necessary evil, isn't it? I mean, what am I supposed to do, learn Japanese? Uh...